Hey everybody, it's time for another Ben 10 action figure review. Today I am especially excited for this video because all of these aliens are some of my personal favorites. Uh, if I was building my own Omnitrix with 10 aliens, I would definitely have all four of these in there. Uh, especially the monster aliens, the, the monster trio here. I'm a huge fan of monster movies, like outside of Ben 10. Um, all the original old Universal monsters, I, I love them. Wolfman, the Mummy, Frankenstein's monster, uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon, Invisible Man, Dracula, all those movies. I love them. I got them on DVD. I even I have another action figure collection of those Universal monsters. Uh, that's a separate thing, but I mean to have these monsters in Ben 10, um, or at least represented in Ben 10. It's, it's awesome for me. It's like best of both worlds, a clash of two of my loves. and So I'm, I'm excited to review this or to review these figurines today. Uh, Wild Vine, although he's not one of those monster aliens, he is one of my personal favorites. I've always liked him. I think he's really cool. Um, so let's get started on him. Here is Wild Vine. Uh, so like I said, Wild Vine has always been one of my favorites. Um, I can't even like honestly pinpoint exactly why I like him so much. He's just one of those aliens that I've always thought was cool. Uh, I like his power set. I love his design. I mean, that's probably a big part of it. Like the the whole Venus flytrap thing, the five legs. He's just long and lanky, and he's a really cool concept for a plant alien. I think they did an awesome an awesome job uh, designing him. And the figurine matches that. I mean, this is a great looking figurine. Uh, so let's get in on the articulation. The head kind of moves. You can see that little wiggle there. It just has a little bit of artic articulation there. Um, obviously, it's in, it's uh, you can't really move it because of this Venus flytrap thing. It just it, it doesn't move um, side to side much because this is blocking it there. But you can actually remove this, the Venus flytrap, so it just pops off and then he has a 360 head swivel. So you can, tech, he does technically have that articulation, but would you ever really pose him without this Venus flytrap? I mean, it's not like you're gonna display him like this, so even if he has that articulation, it's not really like you're gonna get to use it. Um, I'm not even sure why they made this removable, honestly. I don't know why they made this a separate part. But you can look at it there. It's got little pegs right there. You can, They pop into him and hold it into place. I mean, it's got it's a nice little sculpt here. It's got nice detailing. But again, I don't know why they made it a separate piece. And I don't know why you would ever display him like that. It's not like he could remove that or take it off in the show. Um, and then you can see there's that hole there. So you have that hole on the front and another one on the back where these pegs go into. The hole in the back is the one with the screw. So they just pop in there and then keep it keep it in place. Um, so again, once you have that on there, then that 360 articulation is completely inhibited. Can't move his head more than that. So, in terms of, you know, realistic posing, this articulation basically doesn't exist, or might as well not exist. I just, I don't know why you would ever have Wild Vine posed or display him without that Venus flytrap uh, part of his head, but you could if you wanted to. So, there's the option there. Uh, arms move 360 all the way around. And then he has, so this is, uh, we kind of saw this with Stinkfly in a matter of speaking, um, where two legs are combined into one point of articulation. Uh, Stinkfly also had this, so the side legs are connected there. And then they don't really go back, can't move them back much at all. Uh, they do go up just to, you know, normal legs as much as any other figurine. They got that right at the 90 degree angle there. So each side has two legs connected to a point of articulation. And they don't really go back. 
And then the fifth leg back here actually has a couple of points of articulation. So it's got this, you can see that line here where it connects. That actually moves side to side. So you can go left or right with this back leg. And then it also has the uh, second point of articulation there to move it up and down. So it does bend down. You can bend it that way and then it actually goes up a decent amount here. Uh, you can push it up pretty far. I'm not sure why they specifically gave that articulation to just this back leg here. Um, I, I don't know. Probably would have been too much to give it to every leg, I guess. But uh, that does add for some decent posing options to be able to move that leg around back here. And then that's it for articulation on this guy. Um, kind of some unique articulation we haven't really seen with this little side turn, side swivel on that back leg. But otherwise, for the most part, this articulation is pretty standard. Um, like I said, the biggest thing, or the biggest disappointment, I guess, is that head. Because it has the potential to move 360, but you're just not going to be able to unless you remove that Venus flytrap. And then moving on to paint and details. Uh, everything on this guy looks really good. I really don't have any complaints here. They got all the sculpting on his face uh, and his, his Venus flytrap. I already showed that off a bit. You can, I mean, you can even see the sculpting on the back of his neck and his uh, shoulders there. All these little lines on his body. The vines, I guess, of his arm, uh, his lanky fingers. Got the sculpt in there on his the side of his arm, and then his eyeballs. Um, I've always assumed these on his shoulders are eyeballs because it's exactly what he has on his face. So I've always assumed that those are also eyeballs. Um, I guess he can see from his shoulders, uh, but they look good. That uh, baby blue, sky blue color. I'm going to take this off so you can look at the face articulation a bit better. So you can see all that around his neck and everything is sculpted. Uh, the mouth looks good and the, the sculpting around the eye. He's got his little uh, plant antenna there. Um, the lines on the body, the ometric symbol looks great. I and mean, this is pretty cool back here. They've got all these sculpted uh, seed bombs, uh, if you want to call them that. They're the like the little plant seeds that he can tear off of his own body and use as an explosive. So they're all back here, sculpted really well. So let me get him up here with Blitzwolfer. So scaling looks really good on this, very accurate, very show accurate, uh, no complaints there. So let's talk about Blitzwolfer. Blitzwolfer is probably like my number one favorite alien from the entire series. Um, there's a couple that come closer, maybe tie with him, but I'm, I just love this guy. I'm, well, obviously you can tell from the name of my, my channel. Um, my YouTube channel that I am a huge Wolfman fan. I, I love the original movie that uh, you know the old black and white movie with the original Wolfman. Um, so to have a werewolf alien is just so cool to me. Uh, and obviously he used to be called Ben Wolf. Um, it, it kind of took me a while to get used to the new names for these guys because I grew up calling them like Ben Wolf and Ben Mummy and Ben Victor. That's what I that's what I knew from when I was a kid. So when Omniverse came and they actually got names like Blitzwolfer, kind of took me a bit to get out of the habit of calling him Ben Wolf. But um, I did eventually get used to that, and I like it that way. I I think they're awesome aliens and they deserve actual names. Um, not just Ben Wolf or Ben Mummy, but they deserve actual names, and I, I think it's pretty cool that Omniverse recognized them 
uh, more so than the original series did, to be honest. Uh, I, I always really appreciated that about Omniverse. So let's get into the actual figuring here. Articulation, his head does like not move at all. I mean, I'm pushing pretty hard here, as hard as I feel comfortable without breaking the figuring. But you can see he's like, the head isn't connected. There's, it's a separate piece from the body, but it just, there's nothing there. I don't know if I just have an old stiff figurine or if that's if that's standard of this of this action figure but there's nothing there in the head which is I mean that's weird there's nothing blocking it nothing to say that he shouldn't have that but he doesn't um, and speaking of the head this figurine came with on the original packaging he had an alternate head with his snout open because um, you know it was like snout you can see the lines here it breaks off into four pieces and he can do his sonic howl uh, that or the original packaging and everything came with an alternate head with that open snout so if you wanted to pose him like that then you were able to I don't have that alternate head anymore but he did come with that originally uh, so the arms again okay see this one is not moving at all this one is um, so that makes me think that this is just an old stiff figurine so I would have to say that this head probably does turn and it's just mine is so old and just not wanting to move uh, because while this arm goes 360 I cannot get this arm to budge at all so I, I've said it multiple times these are really old figurines I've had them for years since I was a child so bound to come across things like that but like I said it probably does mean this head actually turns mine just won't um, and then moving down you have the elbow joint so we got the 360 shoulder and then the elbow joint does move up and down and then mine actually the, this side does the elbow joint does work it was just the shoulder that wouldn't want to move and then he has the leg articulation at the hips goes up and it does go back, it kind of gets, or the tail kind of gets in the way, but it goes way back. You can touch the back, his back with his own foot. And both sides do that. And then that's it, no other articulation. This is one solid piece here for the, the whole leg and foot. Nothing in the feet for articulation. Um, so, that's it for that. Uh, the tail... I think the tail, I thought it might be removable, but it looks like it is in there pretty good. It does not come out. And there is no articulation with the tail, it's just one solid piece. Paint and detailing with this guy looks pretty darn good. I mean, look at all that uh, sculpting in the face. All those lines and the textures and details in his face with the ears and like the the eyebrows and the you know crinkle of his face that looks really good and he did sculpt like I said the lines uh, the line where his his snout splits it looks like they only sculpted that on the top there is nothing there on the bottom for that um, so there's a little a little bit of detailing they missed eyes look good and then the hair on his back goes down this way the arms are really sculpted well he's got these pointy bits on his elbows and his shoulders and then all this is actually uh, sculpted and detailed in there these lines on the white part of his body and then these black lines here Omnitrix somewhere right there on his stomach looks good these claws are done really well. He's got these big old claws for his toes. Really big feet. And then these big claws on his on his uh, hands. They curl up there. You can see that. That was all done really well. And here is Blitzwolf for next to Snarrow. 
Uh, Snarrow's a bit taller. I, I'm not sure if that's totally accurate to the show. I was thinking they were more equal in height, uh, but the, the figure in here is a bit taller. And moving on to Snarrow, this guy is probably my second favorite of all time, maybe even tied with Blitzwolfer. Uh, I just really like this this alien. I, the design is so cool. I think he's the only one of these monster trios, or this monster trio that actually appeared more than once in the original series. Uh, technically, the second time he appeared, it was uh, Ben 10,000 transformed into him. It wasn't uh, the 10-year-old Ben that was the, the main star of the show. So we, we saw... Uh, uh, Ten-year-old Ben transformed into Snarrow once, and then Ben Ten Thousand turned him into again, which again was the only of the monster trio that we we actually saw twice in that series. Blitzwolf and Frankenstrike we only got to see once, so a little extra love for Snarrow here. Articulation, not much here. I uh, go side to side like that, but because of this like cloak thing on his head doesn't really allow for movement there. The arms again are hindered due to this cloak. They probably have the potential to go 360 but because that's there they are stopped. This doesn't allow for that movement. Uh, the legs they hardly move at all. Um, just that little movement there because of his skirt uh, again, they m probably have the potential to move farther than that, but because the skirt is hindering the movement, that's all you're going to get, just that little wiggle there. And that's it. Not much articulation on this guy. He's, I mean, he's almost just a statue, you know, with a little movement in the head, a little movement in the legs, and even the arms don't move as far as the figurines typically do. So not a lot of articulation here. I guess, oh, you know what, maybe he does have a little surprise articulation. He's got that hip swivel, so you can move that, which is weird because no other figurines in, in these Ben 10 figurines have that hip swivel. I'm not sure if they gave that to him because they just they were trying to separate the skirt part from his upper torso, uh, but yeah, he does have that there. So. I take back what I said about him being a statue. He's got a little extra articulation there that we I don't think have seen yet in these figurines. So that that is that's nice. Uh, paint and detailing though on this is so cool. They got all the wraps in there and that green glow coming from his wraps. Ometric symbol. You can see the detailing on his neck there and his face looks great kinda went out of the lines there on the, the paint with the eyes you can see that green leaks into the black a bit but I just think this alien is so cool it's awesome to see how they you know take a concept like the concept of a mummy that uh, everybody has a standard idea of what a mummy looks like and they they take that concept and they just transform it into this really cool superhero alien and I'm probably gushing a bit because I, I am such a huge monster fan but I've always admired these monster aliens a lot you can see his feet are really flat because they're just uh, they're just cloth. Fingers are the same. They're really flat. Now these pieces on his back do come off. You can see where they're kind of, like they're not connected. You can see that line there. They actually do come off, and they're they're completely separate pieces. Um, I intentionally super glued mine in because I did not want to lose them. Um, a lot of the time, like 99% of the time you see this guy on eBay, he does not have these because they pop out really easily. Like the I like I said, I intentionally super glued them in there. I did not want them popping out because they come out really easily. So they do, they are removable, 
but be careful with that uh, you know be careful if you're trying to buy second hand make sure those are there if you want the complete figurine they are a bendy plastic and they're sculpted really well that's cool how they they uh, bend there but they are e very easy to lose so be careful with that but very very nice looking figurine overall and let's compare him to the next of the monster trio I, know, I keep saying monster trio but I guess that kind of becomes monster Quartet or quintet, if you want to include Ghost Freak and Vampire, um, I always think Monster Trio because these uh, three monster aliens kind of debuted pretty, pretty, uh, uh, pretty close to each other. They were all in like the same story arc, but I guess there there are definitely more monster aliens than the Vampire is another one I love. I really wish they would have made a figurine of him. But let's let's stick to the to the review here. Uh, so Frankenstrike and Snaro. Again, Snaro seems a little tall. I definitely think Frankenstrike should be tall, if not taller uh, than Snaro. But uh, the scaling's a little off there. <clears throat> Frankenstrike, another awesome alien. Uh, so very glad they they brought him back in Omniverse. The uh, head articulation is non-existent. It does not move at all. It's just a solid piece there. Um, there's not even like you can see that it's just all one solid piece connected to his neck. There's no potential for articulation or movement there. Uh, the arms are the normal 360. He's got that elbow joint, and then uh, nothing else in the hands. Then we have movement at the hips, although it is minimal. You can see it goes up just a little bit there, and it goes back just a little bit there. The knee joint moves more, so it goes back that far. Doesn't really do much forward, but it does go that far back. And then that's it for the feet, nothing else there. And that's, artic that's the articulation for this guy. Pretty standard, nothing special. Uh, the paint and detailing for this this alien it was not not great. Um, there were several things I actually uh, painted on here myself that I had to do because I just left out a lot of details on this guy. Um, so I'll go over what I had to do first, and then I'll talk about what actually uh, was done right. But the the black here on his like gauntlets or gloves. That, those black lines, I had to color that in. Uh, that was just, this whole thing was a solid brown. Um, so I colored that in to, to make it more accurate to the show. Um, the stitches on his arms right here, the black stitches, those were not there. Um, and to me, that's like such a vital part of this character design. He's based off Frankenstein's monster. You know, stitches are... A big part of that and <clears throat> I I don't know why they just got lazy they didn't paint those in they didn't sculpt them in but I ended up having to do that myself so these black lines are painted in by myself um, <clears throat> and then on the back here these like nodules uh, electrodes whatever you want to call them so on the front they were painted this is all manufacturer painting with that black and green on the back, I had to paint these, and after all these years, it's kind of scuffed up and uh, smeared a bit, but the black and green here, and maybe even that gray, I think I had to paint. They were just a solid green color, the same color as his skin. All these nodules back here were all just the same green color as his skin, uh, so they did miss out on that paint detailing. I think, you know, they just got a little lazy back here because it's his back. I figure who's looking there, so I got a little lazy, um, but those I did have to paint. And then these lines on his legs, 
they are they're supposed to be green they're supposed to be like this green the same green color here as on his foot uh, in the show they're just a really thin green line um, but they did not paint that probably because it's just so thin it's such a tiny little detail they didn't take the time or effort to to paint that and honestly neither did I because of that reason it's such a skinny little line that I just you know didn't want to make it look any worse than it is so I, I didn't bother painting those green lines in they are sculpted there I mean they're they're there they're just not the right color but and uh, you know most of these things it could just be me being anal I'm uh, I'm particular in that way I like it to be as show accurate as possible um, so he was missing quite a few of the coloring details so I just I took it upon myself to to fix those and color them in but some people have you know you don't even consider you don't care and that's fine I mean it's your action figure and uh, it's your you know however you want to do it but I just like to point it out for the review for the people that do care um, there's a few parts on here that are not totally accurate with the painting so if, if you're feeling craftsy or artsy then you might want to fix those yourself but I mean for what they did get right it looks really good the face is sculpted super well all the hair and the like crazy sideburns he's got going all looks really good his face with his nose and everything Frankenstrike at least in the original series has one of the most human looking faces uh, probably any alien once it, once Omniverse hits he, he gets a little uh, messed up it looks like his face was hit by a train but uh, for the original series this is a pretty human looking face you can see all his muscles sculpted in there and these uh, parts on his pants are all sculpted they stick out I mean the sculpt on this guy is great everything is uh, built really well so I have no complaints there uh, it was just the paint some of the paint detailing they left out I mean you can see like they got this long hair coming down to his back almost to his waist looks really good these uh, electricity towers on his back look good I think honestly in the show they might have had some more color to them I think there was like some black detailing in these I, I never bothered doing that um, and these actually do come out very similar to diamond head almost the exact same design like these little pegs that go into his back uh, same as the uh, spikes that were on diamonds head back they do pop out so if you're looking for this guy second hand again keep an eye out for these because a lot of times they get lost any of these removable parts on any of these aliens tend to get lost and if you're buying them from eBay it's a good chance uh, they're gonna be missing so do keep an eye out for those all these uh, electrode things on his on his front look good uh, again they I mean they were all painted perfectly fine and uh, sculpted well it was just the ones on the back that were not totally accurate they do have the different green colors uh, so those main like torso and shoulders are that uh, that color of green and then the parts on his arms are that shade of green so that's it for today's review uh, again we went over wild vine blitzwolfer aka ben wolf snaro aka ben mummy and frankenstrike aka ben victor like I said, I was just excited to do this review because all four of these aliens are some of my personal favorites, especially the monster aliens. So I hope you enjoyed this review too. Uh, the next video I put out will be Upchuck. I'll actually be doing two versions of Upchuck, the Perk and Merc version, and then I'll be doing Waybig and Arctiguana. So keep an eye out for that video. I'll catch you guys later. Thanks for watching.